Hi, everyone. Today, I have the distinct honor and privilege to speak with you at PlatformCon. Our topic is enterprise modernization through platform engineering. So let me tell you a little bit about myself as a way of introduction. I started my career in systems engineering. I did that for a while, hooking up physical servers and data centers, if you can believe that, then moved on to various engineering leadership roles. And I'm currently leading platform engineering efforts at Convair. So what was our goal when we started this transformation initiative? And the goal was lofty and also fairly simple, is we knew we must evolve from being a mere finance company to become a leading edge fintech. So if you think about it, what is the point? Why did we need to do this? And we had three primary reasons. One, we knew we had to get away from the old school waterfall type mentality, where you do quarterly or monthly releases, they're risky, you take your systems offline, you put up an under maintenance website. We knew we did not want to do this anymore. Second, we knew that the customer space in which we operate and the competitive pressures on us require modern technology solutions. We could no longer afford to do things how we used to do them 10, 15 years ago. Right? And finally, look, the, the world of fintech is typically traditionally has been seen as not the most exciting of all spaces. And so we wanted to position Convair and promote our image that was somebody as a company that values innovation over stagnation. So we knew very quickly that we had to do this. The question is how? And the way the how we did it is by implementing platform engineering best practices. Specifically, we focused on three main things. Number one, streamline development. We knew we wanted to implement a smooth, uninterrupted flow of work all the way from developers, laptop to revenue generation from our customers. Two, we knew we wanted to unlock developer autonomy. We wanted to move away from click ops or ticket ops. We, we wanted to empower developers to deliver end-to-end -end value to our customers as quickly and efficiently as possible. Finally, operational efficiency. We knew we had to keep costs down in line with revenues. We knew we wanted to operate as an efficient, highly optimized cloud native solution. Very quickly, it became apparent that platform engineering was the philosophy that best aligned to achieve these goals. And specifically for us, building a best practice focused internal developer platform was going to be the way of putting that philosophy into actual practice and day-to-day -day implementation. So let's quickly look at our overall platform landscape. Our solution is broken out into several control planes. So we have the developer control plane. That's where our developers check in their code into GitLab. And this is where we join the score file that tells our Humanitech, the IDP, internal development platform, what resources are needed to successfully deliver this given artifact. And then the score file is what actually tells Humanitech how to join these resources together with the code artifacts. And then we have below that, we have the integration and delivery plane. And this is where we invoke from GitLab, we push our artifacts into Amazon Elastic Container Registry, and that in turn invokes our Humanitech orchestrator to tell Amazon to actually provision these resources. And we have all of our best configured resources that are done the proper way, so it's a golden path, and we then we implement them based on our predefined best practices. So our developers don't have to think about how our DS is supposed to be provisioned or what is the best practice around EKS, this is already pre-done for them, and all they have to do is specify all these things in a score file. And then we have our observability plane, where we utilize both Datadog and Grafana for our observability needs. And then we have, obviously, AWS Secret Manager, where we put all our secrets, and that is tightly scoped and controlled to where EKS pods can only access the secrets that they are allowed to access. Okay, so this is the overall platform landscape. Right now, recall our first goal, first bullet point is streamlining SDLC. So let's talk a little bit about how exactly we achieved this. So for us, streamlining SDLC had three main components. First, we wanted to implement continuous integration, continuous delivery, CICD. So that is our way of ensuring that the entire digital supply chain, all the way from developer's laptop to production revenue generation is as cost efficient, and smooth and easy to manage as possible. Second, we made sure to implement infrastructure as code throughout. In fact, one of our environments is actually read-only. So that way, 
the only way to implement any changes in that specific environment on your way to production is to submit infrastructure as code and have Terraform and Humanitech provision all the resources on your behalf. And finally, we invested significantly into continuous QA. So we knew we did not want to have a very distinct phases where first you do development, then you do testing after that, and then you do the deployment. We wanted to make sure we have quality assurance throughout every stage of the pipeline. So let's go a little bit more detail. So we have CI CD, which is where developers check in their code in GitLab. We run our security scans as part of that. And then we push the artifacts into ECR. They get cryptographically signed and that attestation gets attached as a software bill of materials to the container later to be verified. And then we invoke Humanitech, which actually orchestrates the deployment into the EKS cluster on behalf of the user. But the end users, the product, I mean, developers that have no role to play in actual deployment. It, the entire process is automated end to end. So I, I know I mentioned continuous QA. So our goal here is to make sure we test at every stage of the pipeline. One powerful technique we utilize is feature branch testing. You see this a lot of literature, it's extremely powerful. So what we do here is every time there is a merge request for GitLab or PR and, and GitHub is created, we provision a small ephemeral environment, 100% in Kubernetes, entirely orchestrated by Humanitech. And that environment exists only for as long as the feature branch itself exists. Most frequently, it exists even for less time than that. We just tear it down immediately after all the tests have passed. And that is our way to ensure we protect the shared environment from breaking changes. And then we do another level of testing after every deployment. And then we finally, when we go to production, we actually implement deep observability to gain insight into customer behavior. Because for us to have a streamlined SDLC, we have to have that insight into what the customer's true experience is like. We cannot just rely on our, our test automation because sometimes we don't know. Customers could click buttons or do things that we didn't anticipate. In the modern distributed complex cloud native systems, that actually happens quite often. Okay, we've streamlined this DLC, and that may seem like this is super awesome, and it is. However, it is not enough. There's one more thing, if you recall, that we had to do, and that is empower developers to deliver the solution end-to-end -end without stepping outside of their team. So our focus here was removing complexity. We must let developers do what they do best, which is building applications and services. That is their core competency. Right? Managing, creating infrastructure, does not need to be in their day-to-day -day activities. Two, enable self-service. Every time the developer stops what they're doing and they have to go to DevOps team, cloud engineering team, observability team, infrastructure team, storage team, et cetera, all these teams, it's just, it's an interruption in their flow. And we, we want, we're after minimal requirements to wait on another human to provision resources or any kind of manual approval process. We wanted to ensure seamless experience for our teams. And finally, we wanted to offer insights. So democratize access in, into what their code is doing and how that code is behaving in production. That means having deep observability, deep insight into true customer experience, and then letting the developers, granting them access into these kind of deep insight into what's going on, how the customers are actually using the software. And that has been extremely powerful in our journey. Okay, I talked about removing complexity, enabling self-service. Well, how do we do it? So this is a brief overview of how exactly we implemented this. So when the developers check in their code into GitLab, I talked a little bit about score file, and that is an extremely powerful technique from Humanitech where you can tell Humanitech exactly what resources need to be provisioned. And then it knows based on the golden path, the best practices around provisioning these resources. So developers don't have to worry about how RDS is best provisioned, secured, upgraded, whatever. We already take care of all that. It is pre-configured. It is done the best way according to our non-functional requirements, security best practices, et cetera. All the developers need to do is to say, okay, in this core file, I need SQS, SNS, access to RDS, an S3 bucket, and maybe one more service. That's it. And then just specify all that and then ship it and all the magic happens by Humanitech that actually takes care of provisioning and implementing these resources, okay? Finally, our bullet point is observability. 
So we really needed to offer this insight that I talked about before into what the actual code is doing, right? And because without it, you just kind of take your code and you toss it over the wall and you have no idea what's going on. And we offer this kind of insights into how our teams are working. Are they moving through their Jira stories? Are they mostly refactoring? Is there a lot of focus on technical debt? Are the deployments failing? So if you've heard of Dora metrics, they actually help you gain this level of insights, this level of insight into how your SDLC is behaving. Right. And then another thing is we need to look at is if we build this automation, but we have no idea how it's actually behaving. So we have to have that level of insight into how our pipelines are behaving. Are they, if people hate waiting, are they taking a long time? Are they super quick? We have to have that level of insight, right? And finally, stability. So what is our uptime? What are the SLOs? We actually use red metrics in our case from Grafana. What is the health and well-being of our platform that anybody can look at at any time and, and see what the code is doing, right? And then, so finally, we actually implemented a process of surveying our developers to gain that kind of perspective on their day-to-day. -day. And platform engineering principle is treat your platform as a product and our users are our customers. And we make sure we implement this feedback regularly into the process. Okay, to briefly recap, I know I talked about streamlining as DLC and empowering our developers. There's one more thing we have to do because the best of the world solutions, if it costs a fortune to operate and completely not in line with revenue, that is not a good solution. So from the start, we knew we had to embrace operational efficiency. We had to operate lean and in line with our revenue. Okay, and how do we do it? So specifically, we went after cloud native tech stack. So that means ensuring that we are not just replicating a data center, that we're building a solution that is of the cloud and designed from the ground up to be cloud native. We focused on production readiness, and I'll talk a little bit about that, and we made sure to implement cost as a fitness function, okay? So let's talk about cloud native stack, tech stack. So when we build our solution, we knew we wanted to go after containerization and or serverless deployments. And these kind of technologies, both serverless and containerization, offer our ability to do immutable deployments, scale with load, and operate very, very lean. And we implemented production readiness reviews. So these are the kind of uh, checklists that all developers have to go through. And it talks about non-functional requirements, functional requirements, security best practices, auto-scaling, logging, metrics, um, all these things that you know you will need once the service goes into production. And everybody has to do this before they're declared ready for revenue generation. And this has been a very powerful technique for, to make sure we put out a good product to our customers. And finally, but extremely importantly, is we looked at cost as a fitness function. So I talked a little bit about serverless. So again, we focus on serverless if we can. If it doesn't make sense, it's a long running process, that's fine, then we do containers. But we make sure we have no static fixed EC2 machines deployed anywhere in the tech stack because these are difficult to manage. They don't auto scale well at all. They have to be patched constantly. It's just really painful to manage. And so we looked at it and we decided, okay, serverless, containers, and ensure scaling. So as part of our production readiness, all of our services have to publish their metrics, either Kafka consumers, they have to scale based on the consumer lag. If it's a REST endpoint, that they have to scale based on load and memory and CPU consumption and so on. But we knew we didn't want to operate at peak. We wanted to operate in line with what the true customer demand is like. Okay, to recap, I know we covered a lot of ground today. So let's sum up. We talked about empowering developers. We talked about streamlining as DLC. And we talked about ensuring cost as a fitness function. So what, if you put all these things together, right? What is platform engineering truly about? Is it about streamlined development, autonomy, or operational efficiency? Well, really, when you distill it down, it's about fully automated digital supply chain and the humans that interact with it. So therefore, it's all of the above. It's making sure that you have a smooth, uninterrupted flow of work via streamlined development, 
is make sure, making sure your developers are empowered to make decisions and to ship value to their customers as quickly and efficiently as possible. And finally, keeping an eye on your cost, making sure you're operationally efficient, you build solutions that are cloud native, and you scale with load and don't build for peak. Thank you.